Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Jorge Acosta. I'm on the board of directors for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Tampa Bay, uh, which you can reach us at our website, www.tampahispanicchamber.com or our phone number, 813-867-3550. And with us today is Miriam Lugo, mm -hmm. and she joins us from ECHO. Miriam, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, Briefly, can you just, what, what does ECHO mean? Sure. So ECHO stands for Emergency Care Help Organization. Okay. Uh, we, a, we are a nonprofit and we have been in the Brandon area for um, 37, actually, yeah, 38 years, going on 38 years. And uh, we also have two resource centers, one in Brandon and one in Riverview. Okay. So, I mean, if for folks listening mm -hmm. uh, into the, or, or watching the podcast, as far as the, what kind of resources, what kind of. Uh, things that you're looking for for donations for sure. e at either resource center. Sure. So both of our resource centers, um, our service hours to begin with are from 9 to 1, Monday through Friday. Okay. And then Tuesday evening at the Brandon Resource Center, we are also open um, Tuesday evening from 5 to 7. And that is to um, just better help our neighbors that are coming in to receive services if they can't make it during the day. Uh, what we, um, for services that we um, have available for our neighbors in the community are emergency food and clothes. Okay. That is going to be the quick Band-Aid fix. Long-term sustainability is going to be through our advocacy. And what that means is going to be case planning. So if someone comes in needing help with housing, um, apartment, any type of shelter, any type of housing needs, okay. we will help navigate them through those needs as well as as little, and I say as little, but it could be a big case for some of our mm -hmm. folks out there right, in right. the in the community, could be um, child care assistance, um, health insurance, um, daycare vouchers, um, even an ID or your license from the DMV and anything in between. There's, there's, quite a few things that fall underneath that umbrella that is by appointment um, and it is a case planning. So it's going to be a long term starting from point A. How can mm -hmm. they get to point B or D or F? Right. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're going to stay in contact with them for the long term, not just a short fix. And then okay. we also have an opportunity center. What that means is that we have workshops and trainings and we have job coaches that will do one on one job coaching with our neighbors. Um, for that, for our Opportunity Center and our advocacy, you do not need to receive emergency services to take advantage of those other two services. And these are all free to the community. Okay. So now, now let, let's just maybe take a little pause, but you, you mentioned quite a few things there. I know. Um, it was a lot. So so how, how are you uh, uh, getting these resources? How are you getting these volunteers? Mm -hmm. uh, what process does someone go through? Like some of our members might be interested in donating, but sure. what, 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 what services are you looking for? What needs are you mm -hmm. trying to fulfill? So food is always needed, okay. um, especially now with the demand of of uh, the neighbors that are coming in, right, to receive services. Mm -hmm. uh, we have received or we have um, been statistically, we take count of how many folks come in to receive services. So 45 percent have been new visitors. That means that this okay. is the first time that they have ever um, come in to receive services, okay. whatever type of services it is. So we are looking for donations as far as non-perishable food. So your canned food items, mm -hmm. um, cereal box, cereal, um, pasta noodles, even dry soups such as like um, ramen noodles, mm -hmm. anything that's non-perishable as far as food. We also um, allow them to pick out their own toiletries. And what that means is full-size shampoo, um, conditioner, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and razors. Okay. Um, we also, if you want to volunteer, I can give you the information at the end of the podcast and you can reach out to us. We're always looking for volunteers. Um, we have right now about 160 volunteers that give of their time um, to our organization, which is great. But we're always looking for more. And then throughout the year, if it's someone that wants to volunteer and give their time but can't commit because of their work schedule, mm -hmm. we have throughout the year about four different projects that we need a mass amount of volunteers to come in and help. And that might be better for someone um, that is looking for something like on a Saturday or something like that. Yeah, that, that's that's good to know. I know some, you know, corporations, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my employer, for example, I know they sponsor a lot of volunteer events. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. if, they, if they see that, you know, 
uh, there's a great number of volunteers needed, but you know, you get a volunteer day, so you can take yes, that off and go volunteer, exactly. which, that's good to know. Right, right. There are some corporations that do uh, a serve day. And right, then, right. Uh, for example, like you were saying, you can come in and serve, you know, four to five hours and then either go back to work or other companies just right. will give you take the day off. off right? Yeah, that's not a bad deal. <laughs> yeah, it's a good trade-off. Yeah, it is. Um, but I mean, so... So you mentioned also, you know, as far as the need for the, the other services mm -hmm. besides food and stuff, right. you know, with the volunteers mm -hmm. specifically, but uh, with some of the other services, what are those, uh, what does that entail? Sure. So for, we have a uh, advocacy team that mm -hmm. does uh, case planning with our, with our neighbors. Um, and before I go any further, the reason we call them neighbors is a set of clients is because we are working shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. with um, our neighbors in the community. And we are really honestly one situation or one circumstance away from being in the same shoes, especially right. the way the economy is going now. Right. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're working with them, not for them. Right. Um, but so advocacy, um, you can come in and volunteer and uh, serve time like filing, making phone calls, that kind of stuff. That really is going to be a monetary gift donation mm -hmm. because of the um, what we give in return to those that are coming in to receive that service because right. we help with housing and shelter and other needs that they may need that does require more of a monetary need versus a goods need like the food or toiletry type. Um, we also have the Opportunity Center, which helps with uh, job finding, right? So employment, okay. uh, we're looking for businesses that want to partner up with us that um, want to come in meet with us and um, meet with Diane. She's our Opportunity Center Director. And um, it's basically coming in and what openings do you have? Having an open mind to um, who we may have available for that job position. So letting us know, can we call you that hiring manager or the mm -hmm. recruiter within that business? Not saying that our neighbor is going to be the one to get the job, but they're going to have a better step into getting into an interview versus going through Indeed because we're advocating on their behalf. So we're right. looking for businesses to partner up with us um, that may have job openings that can speak and do like a workshop or training um, to help. Is it, you know, financial literacy? Is it going to be a workshop for um, like, how do I learn how to sell on eBay and begin my own little enterprise? Again, okay. we are about sustainability and long-term um, stability for our neighbors. We want to make sure that we equip them with the right resources mm -hmm. for them to feel like they don't have to go back to right. ask for help again. Um, so that's really what we're about. We want to work with them, not for them. So you're, you're, you're not only providing maybe an, an immediate uh, uh, mm -hmm. need or, or, or solving an immediate need, but you're also preparing them for the future. Right? Yes, so. exactly. Yes. Immediate is going to be through the food and clothing. Right. Um, and then we know that a lot of times, like eight times out of 10, there's going to be a root cause for that need Correct. of them coming in. And then as long as they disclose what else is going on, then we can help them with within other areas. So, so let, let's stay on that topic as far as the need part. I mean, I know... Sure. Um, if we could maybe speak on two numbers, right? I mean, have mm -hmm. you seen an increase in the need or the, the resources that are required now yes. over the last few years? So yes. Can you speak a little bit on that? <laughs> yes, we have definitely seen an increase. We always, like every year, we're like, oh my gosh, this is the busiest year. And then mm -hmm. the next year comes and then the next year comes and we're, right. our numbers are, are growing. Um, besides 2020, because 2020 was such a weird year, I think, for all of us in business, right. And um, this has been the busiest year for us. Um, so, for example, like I was saying, new visits is forty five percent. That's been an increase. What we and that's just somebody that's never that received. has never received okay. assistance, and that's just based on the numbers from last month for December. So okay, that's just month over month. Yes. Wow. Yep. So I'm just giving you the numbers from December, um, and that's just like again never come into our to our organization to receive assistance. What we're hearing out in the community is I've gone through my emergency fund, my savings, I've tapped into my 401k. These may be um, a two-parent household with good full-time jobs and let's say three children in the household, but daycare's gone up, groceries, utilities, mm -hmm. and all that. And now they're learning how to navigate like, hey, I've where do I go? Like, how do I get help? I've never been in this situation, that kind of thing. So as far as food pounds that go out the door on a daily basis, 
we are um, distributing about 1,500 pounds a day, and that's from 901 wow. okay. <laughs> at each resource center. Mm -hmm. So 3,000 pounds of food a day from Echo. Um, we have, and I have to look at my numbers, sorry. No, so advocacy, fine. our advocacy team has case planned, um, or they saw 479 individuals in the month of December. We have five on staff. That's a big caseload for five. So mm -hmm. if, if you have a background in social work, please hit me up. <laughs> you know, yes. we really need right. help with that. Um, and then emergency services, which is food and clothing. Uh, we saw 1,400 um, individuals. Mm -hmm. and that's a big, huge number um, because we were closed one week for December. <laughs> so that was right. just in three weeks. Um, that equals to 10,719 families just in the month of December. And our numbers- For those three weeks. For those three weeks, right. correct. Um, the good thing is, even though those numbers are huge and those are folks that are coming in to receive services because their need is great, uh, we were able to place 17 neighbors with meaningful employment. Okay. So it's a good thing, right? What we're doing is working. Our Opportunity Center and our job coaches are getting out there and, and finding and helping them find work. They're even going out to um, job fairs and advocating mm -hmm. on their behalf and just really teaching them. What we mean by meaningful employment is long-term sustainability. We are all about how are you going to sustain for the long term, right? right. Um, is there a 401k in the future? Are you looking at health benefits for you and your family? What does the company offer? Do you have room to grow? Mm -hmm. Do they offer um, tuition reimbursement? That kind of stuff. Some neighbors don't realize that that makes a big difference. It might be a difference of a pay difference, right? Of a $2 an hour is mm -hmm. changing the mindset of I'm not getting 20 bucks an hour without any of those other benefits, right. but okay, you may be getting 18 now. You're eventually going to get the 20 or $22 an hour, but you're getting other benefits that are going to help you and your family Correct. long term. So it's just really educating um, our and changing that and mindset. changing that mindset. Right. That's correct. Right. Because again, um, it's working with them, not for them and right. just really helping them in the education piece. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, those are big numbers. Um, and again, just monthly is um, our Brandon center is 13,000 pounds of food um, wow. between Brandon and Riverview resource centers is 13 to 15,000 pounds of food that's going out. Wow. So, and on that's a monthly a, basis. on a monthly basis. And that's an average. I did an average over a year. Right. Right. You know, a lot, over, it's a lot of, it of is a lot out of, there. It is. It is. It is. Now, and, now, just to go back a little bit, sure. you, you mentioned the term neighbors, and I and I, I did like your, your explanation on that, but I think it's important to kind of dive into a little bit sure. about that again, just because, you know, you mentioned these are, could be your neighbors. Mm -hmm. you know, it could be, you know, yeah. an average family, you know, both parents are working, mm -hmm. or maybe one's not working, got laid off or something. Exactly. So that's something that mm -hmm. maybe folks might not realize, but hey, mm -hmm. you know, your, your neighbors might be in need or might mm -hmm. be, you know, requiring assistance. And I think having facilities like Echo, I think definitely uh, facilitates that and makes mm -hmm. that easy. Um, so can you just, you know, briefly ex explain, you know, how do, how do folks get in contact with you? How do they sure. find out, you know, hey, I need assistance, you know, where, mm -hmm. where do I go? Um, and then to, to tap that off, to, 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 you know, go on top of that, um, what's the, the main resource or need that you think you, you kind of need or yeah. you're looking for? So, um, yes, like you were saying, neighbors could be literally your neighbor next door to you, whether you live in an apartment or in a house. Um, it could be the person that's standing next to you at Walmart, at the grocery store. Um, and our biggest need right now, I would have to say, is food. My okay. office is on one side of the building, and I have to walk through the warehouse to get to, uh, to collect the mail. Mm -hmm. And walking through that warehouse to seeing our shelves empty mm -hmm. um, and how fast the food is going is um, is a little bit heartbreaking. Right. I'm glad that we, as our organization, are there to help those that need us. And at the same time, it's heartbreaking that the food is going so fast. Um, so I would have to say that right now our, our biggest need would be food um, just because it's going in it's it's uh, leaving our doors faster than it's how we're getting in. it, yeah, right. than how it's coming in. And I'll use the example of the school food drives. Um, every fall, we have about thirty four schools that do food drives for us, okay. and it's about thirty to forty thousand pounds of food 
um, depending the year that, you know, like this year, I think it was about 35,000 pounds of food that we received from different schools, which is great. Mm -hmm. And knowing that those parents are probably also struggling a little bit, but we barely put any food and box them up on our shelves because it was going out the door so fast. And by that, I mean that it, the minute it came in, we were just checking expiration dates and putting them on the shelf because the need is so great. Right, to go back out. Yeah, to go back right. out. So I would definitely say that non-perishable food is our greatest need. And how to get in contact with us, uh, you can go to our website, which is echo, E-C-H-O-F-L dot org. That's our website and it has both of our addresses any food and toiletry donations can be donated to either of our resource centers in Brandon or in Riverview. Our phone number is 813-685-0935. And for food donation questions, you can um, dial my extension at 8008. And now that also includes, you know, corporations, large businesses. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, I was going to get they, to that, but thank you for bringing it up. If they want to start like a oh, drive yeah. or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you go into... I can. Yeah. yeah, thank you for bringing it up. So um, businesses can do um, food drives. They can do a toiletry drive. Um, that is all great. Mm -hmm. We love when the community gets together and, and we are more powerful together. Right. Um, so definitely any corporations that want to get, get involved and do something like that, you can also reach out to me. Um and obviously my job is my, um, my title is development manager, which means fundraising. Um, so I get to give out tours and bring awareness to our organization. Mm -hmm. So with that also means any corporations that want to sponsor us on a monthly basis or quarterly or annually. So we have different options for any business um, that is listening to this and that would like to get more involved with that. You can reach me at the same number and we can talk further into that. Yeah, good Good to know that. But that also includes, you had mentioned it earlier, as far as, you know, for for job trainings or yeah, hiring. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Even skills, you mm -hmm. know, developing soft skills. Yeah. Um, that's something that, you know, I think a lot of the, the neighbors would, would benefit from right. that resource right. as well, right? Yes, definitely. And what we're seeing now is um, the older generation mm -hmm. after 60s are having to go back to work. And some of them are not tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So like learning how to use the computer as simple as like, how do I check my email? Um, how do I print a document? How do I scan? You know, that type of thing. So right, right. Uh, we're looking into uh, getting another class started, um, looking into the future and the near future, but something to basic computer skills and that kind of stuff. So if you want to do that and would like to help us, please contact me. Right so that would be great. Now, is your main, uh, uh, as far as, you know, the benefits that you get, the food that you get, the mm -hmm. resources that you get, is anything, you get anything from the government, anything funded from the government? Well, how does that uh, work as far yeah. as the... Uh, Great question. So we are a standalone um, organization. We are a local nonprofit, grassroots. Um, we are not government funded. The only thing that we do apply for government funding is for food. Okay. Again, if we apply for $50,000, we may only get like $8,000. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what happened uh, this past year. Um, so we rely heavily on food donations and the community to help us out, right? Okay. Um, we do have to go and buy food ourselves. But in order for us to keep our food pantry and our food warehouse stocked ye yearly, mm -hmm. it would be about $250,000. Okay just on food. And right. that's probably cutting down, like um, keeping it to about 12 ne necessary food items, mm -hmm. not about the 34 items that we offer, Right. which okay. we want to offer more. So we offer, besides the non-perishable, I think I might've mentioned it before, yes. eggs, um, cheese, butter, and fresh produce and fresh meat. Okay, which mm -hmm. is important, right? It is, it is, yeah. That's nutritional, well. nutritional value. Yeah, nutritional right. value for the kids and, and the parents. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know, I mean, as far as, you know, you, you do rely heavily on donations mm -hmm. on, 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 you know, members you right. know, that, that are watching as far as donations right. and, and providing those services as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's an important topic. It's something mm -hmm. that, you know, we need to discuss. And, right. and as you had mentioned, as far as the, the community's involvement, um, real quick, actually, before, before we do go, as far as, you know, how long have you been part of the, the, the chamber and, and what, you know, made you decide to, to join uh, sure. the chamber? So what made the, um, my decision to become a chamber member is because we have 33% of our neighbors that are coming in to receive services are Hispanic. So, um, I being of Hispanic 
dissent, I wanted to really get involved and be able to bring awareness to, hey, this our own people are coming in to receive services. It's right. 33% of our people. So just wanted to bring awareness. And how better to do that to get involved with a chamber that is bringing awareness to the community within that. Um, I've been with the chamber probably I want to say is maybe around, it was the fall time. So September, August, September time frame. Okay. And it's been great. Great, great. Well, again, Miriam, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, no, thank um, you. Before we end, can you just provide the, your contact sure. information just again for our members to have? Sure. So I can be reached at phone number 813-685-0935. And my extension is 8008 or via email. It's going to be my first name, M Y. R I A M at echo E C H O F L dot org. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you everyone for joining us. Again, this is the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You can reach us at www.tampahispanicchamber.com or at our phone number 813-867-3550. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.